What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post game recap show for game number five of the season. A five to four Mariners win. They get back over 500, improved to three and two, three and oh, and one run games as they knock off the Cleveland Guardians today. Five to four, a much better performance all around. Truthfully, I think their best game of the season, to be perfectly honest. And I am going to break it all down here in this video. Before I get started, as always, and I know some of you might be tired of hearing it, but I, I just have to thank all of you. I mean, I've gained well over 100 subs since my first post-game recap of the season. Um, and, and I thank you guys because it just it means the world to me. When I log in and see more subs and, and likes and support, um, I cannot tell you how good it just makes me feel. Um, so thank you to every single one of you, whether you're new or been here since the beginning. I truly, truly do appreciate it. Um, if you guys can do me a favor, hit that like button. That helps out a ton. And if you are new here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, also head over to the community tab. I've got the next couple of weeks of what you're going to see on this channel kind of painted out when you're going to get post game recaps, live streams, previews, just so you guys have an idea of, you know, when stuff will be coming on the channel and everything like that. Also, don't um, forget to use my promo code JS Trident on SeatGeek. Download the app, go to the website, use promo code JS Trident for $20 off your next purchase. Mariners game, in um, Guardians game, Twins game, whatever you're going to, go ahead and use that promo code and save yourself 20 bucks. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Like I said, I think really the most complete game we've seen from the Seattle Mariners this season. A lot to talk about in this game um, and some kind of funky things that happen. But let's, as I always do, start with the pitching. Um, Emerson Hancock makes his first start of the season uh, and he gets the W. It goes five and a third, four hits, three run, three earn, one walk, one K, um, and did give up the home run. Um, also hit a couple batters. I'll talk about that in just a second. So essentially three free passes plus one strikeout. Listen, I, I'm still haven't been like overly impressed yet with Emerson Hancock. And I don't mean that to be negative or anything like that. Um, as a fifth starter, that is an absolutely acceptable line that I will take. If, if that's what Emerson Hancock, if he ends up having to be up, you know, for a few months or whatever it is, and he can deliver that each time out, I will absolutely take it. Um, the fastball velocity started out really good in the first inning and his first inning I thought was his best inning. That's where he got his strikeout as well. And then it sort of dipped off a little bit. Um, I know that happened a couple times in spring training as well for him. Uh, the changeup looked good. It, it is a quality pitch. Uh, the fastball, you know, like I said, the, when when it was in the high 90s, it was great. Lost a little velocity, lost a little control. I mean, as far as what the Mariners need from Emerson Hancock, I think that's an A start. Now, as far as like grading it on a scale of, you know, comparing it to Kirby, Castillo, Gilbert, and what we know they're going to bring to the table, it's probably more of a C. But Emerson Hancock's the fifth starter right now. And he may not even be that for much longer, depending on, um, you know, when Brian Wu can get back in here. So hard not to sign, hard not to sign up for that. And this was the one game in the series that I was probably the most nervous about. That doesn't mean the Mariners are locks to win the next two by any means, but I thought they were kind of at a disadvantage coming into this one. Um, I would have at best for the Mariners probably called this game a toss up coming into it um, and for them to pull it out is a great thing because now you hand the ball over to Luis Castillo and George Kirby. And I know it's not in this series, but then Logan Gilbert after that, you got to feel pretty good with those three going anytime you're, that you'll win two out of three of the next games with those guys um, on the bump. So nice job by Emerson Hancock. That's exactly what the team needs from him, um, you know, in, in March and April. Uh, Taylor Saucedo pitched two thirds of an inning. He finished off the sixth for Emerson Hancock. A um, couple line drives that he gave up. I'm not going to lie. Haven't been overly impressed yet with Saucedo either. Uh, doesn't look quite as sharp as he did last year. Um, you know, got the job done. Got a couple outs. I'll take it. I'll never complain. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things like during the game, I don't care if you give up 420 foot outs. As long as they're outs, I'll take it. I don't care if your hits are little dribblers that have an exit velo of 11. If they score runs and get you on base, I'll take it. So as far as the game goes, yeah, nice job, nice work by Saucedo. But just in terms of the stuff, the contact, uh, he, he's been okay, but I haven't been blown away yet by uh, Taylor Saucedo yet this season. Um, someone I have been blown away by has been Gabe Spire. 
Another shutout inning, gave up a hit, struck out two. Um, Gay Spire was fantastic last year, no doubt. But it almost looks like he he looks a little bit better to start this year than he did last year. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. Maybe some of the underlying numbers would say he's the same. Um, like I said, he was great last year. That's not a knock on him. But he looks like a legitimate setup man. Like not just get lefties out. Like he could get righties and lefties out. Um, and they absolutely need that right now with Brash and Santos still down. Did get some good news. Brash started to throw his slider. Um, and, um, Santos MRA, M MRA, MRI came back clean. So Brash looks like probably on track here for late April, early May and Santos, I'm thinking maybe early to mid May. So, you know, again, it's survival. Um, your bullpen is not at hundred percent, but you're getting great performances from Gabe Spire. Ryan Stanek pitched well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Do I think Saucedo was great? No, but he got two outs. So, you know, it's kind of the old saying in golf is there's no pictures on scorecards, kind of what you're looking for right now. Just get through this and then get your weapons back. And then hopefully they're fresh, um, you know, for the summer. And then you really have um, some weapons in that bullpen. And especially if Gabe Spires taking another step forward. I mean, you've got four weapons. Even Ryan Stanek looked really good tonight as well. So this bullpen has a chance to be really, really good. Andres Munoz pitched the eighth. Um, struck out one, gave up the home run to Josh Naylor. That was a slider that was just, I mean, I, I will never say that I would have hit that out because I'm not good at baseball and I would not have hit that out. But if there was a pitch that I could hit out, it might've been that one, um, just a center cut slider. Um, I do want to give Scott service some credit. Um, I know some people don't like Scott. He's not the most popular. I, I think every manager is hated by every fan base. I like Scott. I, I think he does a good job keeping the clubhouse together. That doesn't mean he's perfect. He makes mistakes. Um, that doesn't mean that, you know, he should have a lifetime pass to be manager of the Mariners or anything like that. But I thought he made the right call. Going to Andres Munoz in the eighth versus the heart of the Guardians order and then going to Ryan Stanek in the ninth versus the bottom of the order was the right decision. Munoz had to face Josh Naylor. He had to face, now he didn't get Naylor out, but he had to face Naylor, Jose Ramirez, um, I don't remember who else Munoz faced here. Let me see if I can find it. He faced Ramirez, Naylor, I'm assuming Freeman and Brennan, I think. I don't I don't remember. And then I th somewhere in there, but it was the middle of the order. Bottom line is he had to face the middle of the order. And that's what you want your best relievers for is going to them to face the heart of the order. Innings don't matter to me. It doesn't matter. What were you going to do there? I mean, I guess you could have left Spire in for two innings, but then you probably don't have them tomorrow. So you were going to go Munoz and Stanek or Stanek and Munoz. To me, it's like, you know, who are the Guardians' best hitters? They're the guys in the middle of the order. So you want your best pitcher against their best hitters or your best reliever, I should say, against their best hitters. And it worked out. I, I know Munoz gave up the home run to Naylor, but I mean, the argument people would have is that Munoz is better, so he should have pitched the ninth. So if that's your concern, that it was Munoz was the one that actually got hit and not Stanek. Um, but anyways, I don't need to dive much into it. I think that's the right decision. I'm, I'm not big on who gets the save. It doesn't matter to me. I don't think that, listen, I do think there's some guys that have just been more cut for the ninth inning, right? I mean, your Mariano Rivera's, your Trevor Hoffman's are some guys that just thrive in those situations. And I'm sure there are some guys mentally that just don't, but for the most part, I mean, every closer had to start as a non-closer. So this notion that like, oh, you got to go with a proven guy. I mean, at some point, you know, everybody was unproven. So, um, you know, I don't really care who gets the saves um, and who doesn't. I just want my best pitchers against their best hitters. And then I thought Stanek looked really, really good in the ninth inning. He struck out a batter in a clean one, two, three inning. Um, very easy one, two, three for Ryan Stanek. Looked a little shaky with the fastball command on Friday. Fastball command was there. He was touching 99. I'm um, really excited for that because when you get Brash and Santos back, man, having Ryan Stanek as well, Gabe Spire, um, you know, we've seen good stuff from Austin Voth. So this bullpen, I, I know I've said like, maybe I'm contradicting myself. I'm still a little nervous about it, right? Without, without Brash and Santos, I'm, I'm going to be a little worried, but man, th there is also a scenario. Those guys get back and this bullpen is just insanely deep insanely deep that you could have a guy like Ryan Stanek touching 99. That's essentially your, you know, a guy for the fifth, sixth inning, um, or, or a guy that could pitch tonight or a guy in extras that you can go to. 
um, is just remarkable. So hopefully they can get everybody back healthy here because this bullpen has a chance to be really, really special. And I thought Scott made the right decision. Do want to go back? I should have probably talked about when I was going over Hancock's line. But uh, in the second inning, was it the second inning or was it the third? It was the third inning. Emerson Hancock hit Ramon Laureano to lead off the inning. It ended up leading to a couple runs scoring. Um, it was 4 nothing at the time. Laureano was hit. A couple runs scored. Ramon Laureano 100% swung at that pitch. There is zero doubt he went around. Yes, it did hit him. Um, so the ori originally it looked like it was put into play and it was an out. And then it was reviewed that it hit him, which was the correct call. It did. So it should have been a dead ball, but he 100% swung at the pitch. Now, for anybody confused, what the call was is the first base ump said he did not go around. So the review, you cannot review a check swing. It, it's sort of like considered, you know, like pass interference in football. It's a judgment call. So, um, you know, you guys can argue that should be or not in the comments, but that's what it is. So they did not go to review to see if he swung or not. It was just to see if it hit him, which it clearly did, but he swung. If you swing at a pitch, whether it hits you or not, it is a strike. So that should have been a swing and it's not a foul ball. So I guess, it, I don't know if that's considered a, a dead ball. I don't know if it's strike, but what bottom line is Loriano should not have been on first base. That was a terrible job by the umpires. Um, listen, I've said it before and I said it on Twitter, you know, borderline calls, um, bang, bang plays at first, you know, pitches that are tough on the edges. I, I I'm pretty forgiving of umpires guys. Like it's tough. These pitchers are throwing 99 with movement. I don't know how they get some of the calls right that they do. I'm not saying they're great. I'm not saying we shouldn't have some sort of automated strike system. I'm in favor of it, but you know, it, it's tough. That was not a tough call. That was clear as day a swing. And listen, the Mariners won. It is what it is. And, you know, Emerson Hancock's got to settle down and get over that. I'm, I'm not going to just blame the ump for the two runs that were scored. You still have to settle in. Things happen, right? Errors happen. Mistakes happen. You've got to adjust and bounce back. Just like in football, there's bad calls, and you have to find a way to get around them. That's sports. But that was just absolutely awful, an awful call. And these umps, who are all likely all going to be losing jobs here soon, you know, I said on Twitter, you think it might humble them a little bit, but they've turned into bigger, bigger tools. You know, then Dylan Moore gets thrown out for arguing it. I mean, come on. Like, it, it's just a, the umps have made it about the umps. That's, it seems, I don't know. And, and I'm usually not one to go on rants about umpires. Like, it just, it is what it is. And, and I get the job is hard. I'm not at all trying to, like, say it isn't. But, you know, it was clearly a missed call. Dylan Moore was angry. Can't you just look at Dylan and be like, you know what? We may have missed it. You got to go back to the dugout. You got to go back in there, man. Like, come on. But no, just throw him out. I mean, you know, sometimes there's the magic word. I don't know what Dylan Moore said. So I'm, I'm not going to harp on it too much, but just an awful missed call and something that could have really cost the Mariners. And it's just, like I said, bang, bang calls, close strike, first ball call. It, it can happen. I, and I'll even defend ums on that. If it's borderline, a borderline call, that means it's borderline. It can go either way. This was not borderline. Loriano swung at the pitch. Not blaming Ramon Loriano or anything. It's not an attack on him, not an attack on the Guardians or anything like that. Stephen Vogt did the right thing challenging it. But um, yeah, and you know, it is what it is. But just I had to talk about that call. It was absolutely dreadful. Let's look at the offense and I'll talk a little about the defense as well. Much, much better from the offense today. That's the type of performance that we need to see still some things, still a few kinks in the armor that we saw, but you know, I'm, I'm telling you guys deep breath after the first four games. Do I think this offense is the best in the league? No, I don't expect that, but I absolutely believe they can be top 10 in WRC plus weighted on base average, all those type things. Um, and even if you're down on the offense, so the first four games or WRC plus was 57. I mean, they're clearly not going to do that. I mean, that's, Worse than that's way worse than whatever the A's rolled out last year. I'm assuming it is, but <laughs> I'm sure it is. So this is like, unless you think this is the worst offense in the game, which is clearly not, they're going to play better. And they played much better today. Seven hits, six walks, five runs, much, much better performance all around. Um, JP Crawford was 0 for 4. Julio 1 for 3 with a walk on base twice. He did have a really bad base running blunder in the seventh. Or was it the eighth? It was seventh or eighth. Um, ran right through Manny Act, a stop sign on a Mitch Hanniger single. You know, I, I get Julio's got the momentum there. He's running. 
it can be tough to stop. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes you're just going and it's, and it's just your mind is go, 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 go. And it's hard to see that stop sign and just put the brakes on. So, and I'm sure Julio's mindset was go, but you stop there, bases loaded, nobody out, and you got a chance to really open up the game. And maybe you don't have to use Stanek or Munoz, and you can save them, you know, the next couple nights. That's a mistake that just can't happen. Um, Julio also, though, deserves credit for making two spectacular catches. Um, one up against the wall, I think, in the first inning, and the other a diving catch um, in center field. He did have a home run by Freeman that kind of just went off his glove over the fence. But honestly, like, I, I know the guardians Twitter made a joke about it. Like what happened to the no fly zone and stuff, but it's like Julio to even get to that ball is ridiculous. So yeah, it might've stayed in the park had he not put his glove on it, but it is what it is. Julio played really well defensively. Good to see him on base a couple times. Got to make better base running decisions. Uh, Jorge Polanco one for four had a hit. Good to see in his last at bat. He gets a nice base hit. Hopefully he gets going soon. Um, again, nice seat. Like I said, the Mariners, a nice offensive day. And that's with, um, going two for 11 with a walk from their, um, top three hitters in the lineup. So, um, good to see and good to see Polanco get the hit. Another nice game for Mitch Hanniger, solid line drive base hit also had a walk. He's on base a couple times. Uh, Garver was over three, had a walk. Uh, Cal was one for three, scored a couple runs. He had a base hit. Um, he had a nice line drive in the seventh inning. It was caught probably would have been a sack fly had Julio held up. Um, in that situation, that's when the one where he ran to the stop sign, but it is what it is. How about Ty France? Real nice game for Ty France. Uh, two for three, um, an RBI single, a walk, uh, that RBI single classic Ty France, uh, hit that he drops in between center and right field on um, base three times. And listen with, you know, Ty France right now is a 701 OPS. Is that amazing? No, but I do think Ty has looked better. Um, the contact has been good. Um, putting better swings on balls. He obviously looks a lot trimmer. I'll talk about the Maniac to sending him home on the JP Crawford fly ball in a minute. But um, yeah, I mean, Ty looks, he looks good. He looks the part right now. And, you know, you're not having Ty bat second or third in the order. So do I want a 701 OPS for my first baseman? No, I prefer much better than that. But, you know, we're five games in, so it's hard to really just look at OPS and say that's that, you know, that's it. But um. Ty looks good. He he looks improved from last year. So hopefully we're seeing um, a little bit of that bounce back from Ty France. Dom Canzone, one for four with a three-run home run in the second inning. Uh, gr great piece of hitting by Canzone. Essentially takes it the other way. Um, it's going to be really nice if Canzone can learn how to hit a breaking ball because um, he still had some really bad swings. To, I, I hate to say that in a game where the dude hit a three-run home run. And I like Dom Canzone, so this is not me being negative. Um, if you can go back and watch my video on the trade, I liked that trade um, 100%, but um, some bad swings in there. But you can see what, what Dom Canzone can do, right? Like, you know, that's Canzone. You kind of see the good and the bad all in one there, but got to learn to either hit a breaking ball or really get better laying off of them um, if you're Dominic Canzone. But uh, great to see the three-run home run. Urias was 0 for 3, did have an RBI walk. You know, we'll take it. Um, that was actually in that bat where he was, um, called for an automatic strike. So nice job by Urias to bounce back there, but have not been super impressed, um, with the contact yet from Urias. He's had some rough at bats, but a night that was a nice at bat to draw the walk. So overall much better performance today. Um, I think every Mariner reached base, uh, except for JP Crawford. Um, JP had a sack fly, I think in the fourth inning after Urias's walk. He did not have a sack fly. He had an attempted, I guess, sack fly. Uh, shallow fly ball that Maniac to sent Ty France home on. Uh, clearly out. I, I kind of defended it at first on Twitter. I'm like, yeah, I know I get Manny sending him there. Um, you know, but then I thought about, it. I'm like, okay, Ty France, still not fast, right? Like, probably a little faster than last year, but that's still slow. And with Julio on deck there, uh, you just can't do it. You, you cannot send Ty France in that situation. You got to give Julio... Um, a crack with the bases loaded. So really bad decision there by Manny Acta. Luckily, it doesn't cost the Mariners, but still, you know, better decisions need to be made. So a couple kind of boneheaded mistakes. They, you know, Julio, um, Julio's base running, Manny Acta sending tie, um, you know, still some at bats that left a little bit to be desired, but still a much, much better performance overall. Um, Would have been nice for them to add on a little bit too, but again, 
you know, after the first four games to see five runs, six walks, seven hits, you know, I'll sign up for that any day. So really nice performance. Um, you know, Tristan McKenzie for the guardians. Um, you know, I talked about it in my preview. I thought it was going to be a tough task for them. I will say it was, I did not think McKenzie looked very good. Um, you know, he had an outstanding 2022 and then, um, missed most of last year, pitched a little bit in September and, you know, it might just be taking a while to get his feet back underneath him and everything having missed, you know, pretty substantial amount of time, but, uh, fastball velocity didn't look very good. So, and I'm not taking away from the Mariners either. I, I want to be clear on that. I'm bringing that up to not take away from the Mariners. You know, I gave a lot of credit to the Sox pitching staff um, in this last series and how good they pitched and the Mariners struggled, but McKenzie didn't look very good and the Mariners chased him in four innings. Again, that's what you should do. One thing that drives me nuts is when people like kind of eliminate players success because it was against you know, well, the Mariners would have been good last year if they didn't beat up on the A's. Well, guys, the A's are on their schedule. You know, that's what good teams do. You try to, I say it a lot, but goals to break even with everybody and you beat up on the bad teams. I'm not calling the Guardians a bad team here, but my point is anybody that's going to go, well, McKenzie just looked terrible. That's why the Mariners offense had success. Well, good. That's what they should do. When a pitcher is struggling, if it doesn't look good, you take advantage and chase them out of the game. I'm not going to knock the team for doing what they should against someone that doesn't look sharp. It's certainly better than the alternative of not hitting a guy that doesn't look sharp. So I don't think their performance should be downgraded uh, because of that, but you know, just from a standpoint of watching the game was not overly impressed with McKenzie today. Um, a guy I really like, but just did not look great um, today. Emerson Hancock gets the W just what the doctor ordered offense wakes up a little bit today, getting better. I think it's going to get going. Um, this next two games are going to be tough. Um, you know, Shane Bieber is going to be a tough task tomorrow. Hopefully then you get to play Milwaukee. That might open up the bats a little bit. We'll see. Um, I haven't really broken down Milwaukee's pitching, um, but I will do that for the series preview, obviously, um, this week. So, you know, listen, I thought this, I thought the Bears would take two out of three, and I kind of thought tonight would be the game they didn't get. Um, I thought this is going to be a tough one. That doesn't mean they're going to sweep. You know, Bieber is going to be tough tomorrow. They could easily lose that game, but they're in good shape now. They're in good shape to win this series, um, get their first series W of the year and head out on their first road trip above 500. So if they can find a way to win tomorrow. They'll set themselves up well um, for Milwaukee and Toronto. So a, a nice win. Every win is nice. There is no such thing as a bad win. It just does not exist, especially in baseball, especially in baseball. Where anybody can literally beat anybody. Um, so the mayor's improved to three and two. I'm going to head out. Have a great night, everybody. Remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, head, head to the community notes, check out my schedule for the next couple of weeks, um, and hope you guys can make it for some of the live streams. Um, think about becoming a channel member. There's going to be a members-only live stream with, with a giveaway that's probably going to be a new era hat. If you're not a hat person, probably something like you know $50 value or less that you're interested in. Um, so think about becoming a channel member. Like I said, once a month, have live streams. They'll have contest giveaways. Um, and if you can't become a member, absolutely understand there's going to be live streams for everybody as well. So have a great night, everybody. Enjoy your Monday, eh, yeah, Mondays, <laughs> um, and then, but baseball's back. So it makes the weekdays a little more tolerable. Go Mariners. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Peace.